Just so we'll all be on the same page uh, before we get started here, I'll read the scripture that goes with my sermon. <laughs> uh, I think that was uh, the wrong passage there, but the uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this whole treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Amen. So I'm sure most of you remember by now that I love to tell stories. It's just something that excites me to hear a good story, especially a good short story. Here's a really good story entitled The Cracked Pot, a story for anyone who's not quite perfect. It goes like this, a water bearer in India had two large pots, one hung on each end of the pole which she carried across her neck. Now one of the pots had a crack in it, while the other pot was perfect and always delivered a full portion of water at the end of the long walk from the stream back to the mistress's house. The crack pot arrived only half full. For a full two years, this went on daily, with the bearer delivering only one and a half pots of, full of water to her master's house. The perfect pot was proud of its accomplishments, perfect to the end for which it was made. But the poor cracked pot was ashamed of its own imperfection and miserable that it was able to accomplish only half of what it had been made to do. After two years, after what seemed and perceived to be a bitter failure, the pot spoke to the water bearer one day by the stream. I am ashamed of myself, and I want to apologize to you. Why, asked the water bearer, what are you ashamed of? I have been able for the past two years to deliver only half my load because this crack in my side causes water to leak out all the way back to your mistress's house. Because of my flaws, you have to do all this work and you don't get full value for your efforts, the pot said. The water bearer felt sorry for the old cracked pot. In her compassion, she said, as we return to the mistress's house, I want you to notice the beautiful flowers along the path. Indeed, as they went up the hill, the old cracked pot took notice of the sun warming the beautiful wild flowers on the side of the path. And this cheered it some. But at the end of the trail, it still felt bad because it leaked out half its load. And so again, it apologized to the bearer for its failure. The water bearer said to the pot, did you not notice there were flowers only on your side of the path, but not on the other pot's side? That's because I've always known about your flaw, and I took advantage of it. I planted flower seeds on your side of the path, and every day while we walk back from the stream, you've watered them. For two years, I've been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate my mistress's table without you being just the way you are 
she would not have this beauty to grace her house. So a few of you take a guess. What is the moral of this story? Just shout it out. Don't be afraid to be a crackpot. Good. I like that. Anybody else? God uses you just the way you are. Anybody? Get to know one another. Get to know one another. Because each of us has our own unique flaws. We're all cracked pots. But it's the cracks and flaws we have that make our lives together so very interesting and rewarding. Or as the bulletin cover quote from E.B. White says, genius is more often found in a cracked pot than a whole one. Of course, we know E.B. White as the author of the beloved children's classics, Charlotte's Web, Stuart Little, and the Trumpet of the Swan. You see, with this cracked pot story in mind, we listen to the text once again. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness. This God made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. And then there's that but again. But we have this treasure in jars of clay, cracked jars of clay, to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. In other words, you could say that God's light shines through not our perfection, but through our cracks, our weaknesses. Now this is so countercultural, isn't it? Is that why Jesus said that he came for the sick and not the well? He came for the ones that didn't quite have it together, not those ones that thought they did. And the text from 2 Corinthians is about the Apostle Paul himself because he's come into grips with how God is made known more through his weakness than his strength. And later in the same letter, Paul says, and this is Paul saying this, because Paul struggled with pride. Paul says, to keep from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations that I've given you, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. There's humor there, folks. A thorn. Paul, he was so carried away with how great he was making these revelations to the people. And so he finds he's got a pain in the butt, a thorn in the side, a backache to humble him a little bit to keep from becoming conceited because of these surprisingly great revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. And Paul says, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But God said, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Paul, you see, realizes that it is in his weakness that his authority as an apostle is validated. It's in our weakness that we become disciples of Christ. It is such fragile clay that the treasure is carried in. The suffering, rejection, and struggle all seem to diminish Paul as a human leader. And actually, they serve to reveal the extraordinary power of God. So it is. We're all cracked pots. Do I hear an amen? amen. So how does being a cracked pot 
let the light of Christ pour through us. Tie in to this beautiful Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. The psalm is reminding us once again that we all yearn to belong. To belong to a God that knows us intimately. And we cannot take this psalm seriously without being moved to awe. Not only at the work of God in ourselves, but also at God's handiwork in one another. God searches us over and accepts our flaws, our humanness. And as E.B. White says, it's God's genius, not ours, that finds genius in a cracked pot. You see, a cracked pot is fearfully and wonderfully made. And how much more wonderful that God can shine through our weaknesses. So contrary to what the church has been teaching for centuries, coming to church is not about having it all together. It's about admitting that you're a cracked pot. And when we admit that, the light of Christ can begin to shine through us and shine in our weakness. And as I look out today, I see a lot of light shining toward me through a bunch of cracked pots. So may we work as a church to let God use us even in our weakness shine light shine because I am a cracked pot fearfully and wonderfully made and there's a bunch more here with me shine search us your clay pots that hold your treasure for the world to see your light in the name of the Creator, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I pray, amen.